Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wow's Alive. We're here with a very special guest who just spent over 52 hours on a boat. Jeannie, yeah. welcome. Yeah, nice to have, nice to be here, Steve. Yes, and please Thank explain, you. you know, how you got into the sport, your background as a swimmer, and, and how you got involved in this uh, very <laughs> special swim. Which landed me on a boat for 50, yeah. almost 53 hours, yeah. um, which was a fantastic experience. Um, I was always a swimmer, uh, okay. I think from the age of 13 on, um, kind of a late onset, I guess, at 13. Uh -huh. um, but always an adult swimmer. And then um, I was an IT person, believe it or not, for 20 years in uh -huh. higher ed. And then I just kind of decided at some point in 2009 that that wasn't me anymore. And um, I started looking at what I would be doing next. And I always, I coached when I was younger. And so, you know, somehow I landed back in coaching through a friend who, and a mentor who said, we have to get you coaching again. And one thing led to another and I became a total immersion coach. Got it. And I just had a sense when I was filling out the total immersion coach application that I would love open water. I hadn't done it, but that was 2010. Uh -huh. um, but I just had a sense that I would love the adventure of it. So in 2010, I started open water swimming and uh, one mile led to two miles, led to three miles, went to, led to six miles, led to 20 miles, uh, led to 29.5 around Manhattan and uh, meeting people along the way and loving every minute of it and loving the challenge of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, simple, I'm a coach. Yeah. Yeah. So that sense of adventure, did it, uh, how, how do you think that, was that something that you had always wanted to do when you were a child and you never had the opportunity? What, what drew you to that need for, <laughs> to experience adventure? Um, I think I've always been adventurous and I've always loved travel. And uh, a lot of open water swimming is travel. Yeah. You know, I remember Lynn Cox saying, you know, when she looks at a map, she looks at the blue spots, <laughs> not the green spots. Yeah. And when she said that, I thought, that's me. I look at where I can swim and where the water is, no matter where I am. And um, I just, uh, I'm at home in the water. It's just where I love to be. And I, I think um, I do have unfinished business. I I did not swim in college, and okay. I kind of regret that. I I um I was kind of a late onset swimmer, so I didn't really start competing until I was in eighth grade. Uh, by the time I went to college, I just didn't know anything about collegiate swimming. Um, I went to Penn State; it was big, and I didn't walk on. And I guess that's just my my regret that I didn't try. And so, darn it, I have unfinished business. Yes, and got it. Um, and I did not, I didn't uh, max out, you know, I didn't, okay. I didn't swim too much too young, you uh, know, and yeah. so. Do you have, um, yeah. do you have some swims on your bucket list that you're looking at? I do. The reason why I was available for Caroline is because my Catalina channel uh, solo was okay. canceled and it was supposed okay. to be last Monday, uh, a week okay. ago. And it was right when I was deciding not to go out there and do something else this Got year. It. Instead, um, that Caroline and I ha were talking and, and, you know, we love to swim together and train together. We kind of swim stroke okay. to stroke okay. when, when we're together and um, when our paths cross. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had just decided right then that I wasn't going out to the West Coast to do a swim right now. And I was available. So next august i'm on for the uh, english channel solo oh great um, great and at the end of august next year so that's my focus right now and then i'll loop back to catalina in 2022 okay to to complete the triple crown that's that's the goal got yeah. it got it so how did you and caroline meet what do you live next to each other do you what, what's the kind of crazy we um we may have met first in ireland I went over, you know, Caroline likes to do that North Channel yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah. and, you know, tr doing the, tr trying to do that double. Right. And um, I was over there in 2017, uh, in a end of July for a, an English Channel relay. Okay. And we had, 
we had common friends and my my teammates and um we ended up in Ireland for a couple of days doing some training swims with one of our teammates and Caroline was there doing one of her North Channel swims. So she was she hung out with us. Um, and then we just kept crossing paths like okay. at the same gatherings, the uh, gatherings of swimmers. Um, and then we would hook up and swim together. We just Got it. found it easy to, you know, it's kind of hard to find somebody exactly your speed yeah. to swim side by side with. And she and I just kind of figured that out. And then um, last year I needed, I thought maybe I would, might want a support swimmer to hop in during 20 bridges um, around Manhattan. And Caroline was coming back from Ireland. She basically got off the plane, barely slept, and then ended up being my observer no on that way. swim. Wow. Not, not, I didn't need a support swimmer, but she uh, was, you know, was willing to do that if I needed her. But, uh, but then she became my observer instead. Wow. And so she, she observed for me on 20 bridges with no sleep. Wow. And uh, yeah. And then uh, I went to visit her, you know, a few weeks ago in Lake Placid and we swam together. Okay. And uh, so our paths just keep crossing. Yeah. And when did she approach you for you to be part of her crew for this particular swim? Which was, um, oh, for people who are not familiar, actually explain what, uh, what Caroline did. She actually. did. Yes. Um, she attempted the first ever and completed the first ever, ever double crossing of Lake George. Uh, from south to north to south Got it. and it was 64 miles hers was 64.4 um for 52 hours and 24 minutes wow um yeah and her i don't know what her longest swim was before that i'm guessing we were guessing this that it was the, a 28 hour at some point she had done long swims but if you don't complete the whole leg right. you know it doesn't really count so um you know it counts to me but not yeah. to the not to the real people but um so I, I think uh i can't remember when she contacted me it was probably in the summertime maybe okay. maybe july she was supposed to do this swim in june oh. and because of uh covid um she didn't get a chance to and it's been very difficult for anybody to do a swim that long on lake george just because of the rules of overnight boats on oh, Lake I, George. Oh, what is that rule? There's something about being able to not you can't rent a you can't rent a boat overnight oh. on Lake George. So, um, you know, it's been difficult to for her to navigate how to um, oh. get around that or how to how to do it legal, you know, the right, right way. And so she hired a, and found a dive boat company. Uh -huh. um, let's see, I wrote. Uh, Water Horse Adventures. Okay. And, um, you know, a, a woman named Kim and her and the Captain Jim and, um, and they were willing to take this on and because it, it required, you know, two nights plus, a, plus she finished on the third night. Wow. Um, so there, it was complicated to for her to figure this out. She was supposed to do it in June. I think she probably reached out to me in July. That's mm -hmm. about when I was deciding not to go out to California to do something else. Um, and and i was available so wow. so uh, take us through that 24 hours before her swim started um did you get your regular sleep did you did you go up to lake george what, what were the yeah. so we were uh by the way an all-female crew of five um we had uh, kelly latimer was our crew chief and uh, rose buckman and deb henson and then Elaine Howley and myself okay. for um, observers. Um, we went up on Tuesday. I had to work Tuesday night, I coach, and we we went up uh, halfway, and then I'm about six hours from okay. Lake George, and uh, everybody was gathering at like four o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, by the way, she was supposed to do this swim from Friday to Sunday, and on the Sunday before the swim, yeah. um, I got the, the text, hey, I need to move up my swim, my swim I think. Uh, the weather was going south, oh. really cold by the end of the week. So with on Sunday, I told her I was available to, lead, to meet her, to drive on Tuesday yeah. and help on Wednesday. And then my friend Deb, who was coming along as well, also cleared her calendar and then 
Caroline was able to pull together her team wow. rather rapidly, like from Sunday. And Just, I think by Sunday or maybe later Sunday, maybe Monday morning, we knew we were going and we knew we needed to drive on Tuesday and meet on Wednesday. Wow. Um, so I did the best we can. Yeah, I slept normally. Okay. Um, I, in retrospect, maybe I should have power slept more. Um, I'm not that young as a, a spring chicken. So uh, I like to think I have boundless amounts of energy, but uh, this pushed me a little bit. Um, so yeah, we just got there Wednesday at four. And it's interesting because you, you, won't, you meet, you know, and as a crew and you're like introducing yourself, like, hi, I'm Jeannie, you know, and you may or may not be friends on Facebook. Right. And maybe that's about all you, you know. And then within, within two hours, we had to, you know, come oh, together yeah. and, and, you know, take good care of her and yeah. work as seamlessly as we could wow. very rapidly. Yeah. Now during, uh, you, you, you got to the, the South end of, of Lake George. Are you preparing food? Are you mixing stuff? Are you packing bags? What, what is that yeah. all about? Um, it's kind of hard to know what, what to bring. And what I would tell somebody is you're not going to change your clothes. You could probably just wear layers and take a toothbrush because the whole notion of changing or doing anything else while you're on that boat, uh, uh, it's not happening. So, you know, we overpacked and brought too much stuff. Um, Caroline did the food shopping for the crew. We also brought food. Um, she was gathering, uh, she's very, you know, she has this down, she's done a million of these things. Yeah. And, but this was, you know, definitely right. the way big, way much, uh, you know, bigger than the rest, but all of her swims to date have prepared her for this. So she knew what kind of feeds, you know, powder feeds, car liquid carbs, um, water, um, the solids that she wanted. And then it was just about educating us as quickly as possible about what she's going to want, when she's going to want it, how she's going to want it, you know, and from feed to feed. Um, as for us, it wasn't that, you know, other than paring down what we were taking, because we figured out that the boat was small, you know, it's a dive boat, yeah, you know, yeah. so we were pressed for space and some of us didn't know what exactly to bring. You know, I had, a, I had observed a 20 bridges. Okay. for eight hours, which is totally different than 52. Um, so I didn't need much of anything on my eight hour one, you know? Um, so yeah, she was preparing things. We were gathering things. We were trying to do logistics, like, you know, how, how are we gonna get to the boat? Where are we gonna park cars and all that jazz? Yeah, and then did you have any idea it would be 52 hours or did you know it was gonna be just more than 24? Um, no, thankfully, Caroline knows how she swims okay. and she estimated it to be 50. Really? And yeah. Wow. And so we knew that it was, uh, you know, I, I knew it was going to be 50 ish. Okay. Um, she knew what it took her to do one length a number of years ago when she hold, held, held the record recently. Yeah. Um, Charlotte just did it again, you know, did it a little bit faster recently. Um, so she kind of knew like what, what, what to expect from a time perspective. And we actually thought that she was going to be on that 50 ish, mm -hmm. but the last 10 miles or yeah, 10 miles, 10 hours, give or take was just brutal, wicked, wicked, brutal conditions. Uh, um, and that pushed it to, you know, 52, 24. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we went into it, but I really had no idea what 52 on a boat was <laughs> going to be. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea that like two nights and then swimming into the third. Yeah. Okay. So what time did you start on, on Wednesday? We started at 5 45 PM. Okay. From Glens Falls. Got it. Dock. And, and about when was the sun setting? When did it get completely dark that first night? Pretty quick. Really? Uh, the sun, the sun sets at six, six thirty. Okay. Um, so you're yeah. already swimming in the dark just right from the get go. Mm -hmm. And by the way, no moon, no moon, no moon at all, okay. um, but stars to beat the band. So there were lots of stars yeah. um, and Mars, um, but uh, otherwise pitch, 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 pitch black. And she started out her swim 
you know, very quickly swimming in the dark. Okay. And uh, how did the crew, how did you sort of, again, you, you know people, some people you know on Facebook, some people you know personally, some people you've met for the first time. How do you, how do you mesh together? How, how do you sort of, you know, the first six hours where people just sort of feeling their way around or yeah. what was that like? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is what I love about the open water community. I just, you know, I find so many wonderful people in it and we all have this crazy side where we like to challenge our, you know, push our limits, challenge ourselves. We're okay being alone in our heads for hours on time, hours on end. Um, I think, you know, it works really well if you're flexible, but somewhat organized. Um, so pretty quickly, we, we sort of, you know, like Elaine and I uh, figured out what our, what our switching was going to be. And the crew, the three, uh, you know, Kelly, um, Rose and Deb figured out what their switching was going to be. And, you know, Kelly was our very, very capable crew chief and, you know, was kind of showing the way, leading the way for Deb and, um, and Rose. And, you know, this is how you throw the bottle and we want to throw it in front of her and let the rope out and, you know, and, um, and then, you know, you, so you're just kind of feeling each other out and yeah. trying to be as flexible as possible. Um, and, uh, as team oriented as possible. And that's what I find interesting about these swims. They're called solos, right? Yeah. And they are solos, but anything beyond a 5K, you're relying on other people. Yeah. You're relying on kayakers and boats and crew and observers. And you're just relying on a lot of other people to get you there and to be, to have your back. And and you know, our moms and dads are watching us and they're hoping that people are watching our back and yeah. you know, a lot, there's a lot going on. So yeah, we just take the few hour, first few hours to figure each other out. Okay, so, so now you're meshing well together. How was that first, let's say 12 hours? How, how was it that first night? Was it calm, was the stars are out or was it mm, windy? I wouldn't call it calm. Um, you know, I was logging everything, right? Every 30 minutes, uh -huh. I writing, um, my, my first shift was 1.45 a.m. of the first night. Yeah, I let Elaine go first. Elaine had, had done more. Elaine was with Sarah Thomas, yeah. you know, on her four-way English channel. So I let Elaine observe first, and, and then I thought, I'll, and I'll take the, the overnight shift first. Yeah. So 1.45 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. And um, so I went and tried to lay down for a little bit. Forget that, you know, like, I'm not going to sleep at 8 p.m. I yeah. never do that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I took a nap, but then got up and came out and it's pitch black. Um, the wind's blowing a pretty good clip, you know, at that point. Um, it's pretty darn wavy and probably in the 15 to 20 mile an hour range. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. The air was overnight, uh, you know, 50, it got down to 52. 50, okay. 51, 52. Right. Uh, the water was 67. Okay. Um, most of the time down to 66 um, the next day. Um, but I woke up and went out there and whoa, it was quite an eye opener to, you know, uh, to observe in the dark yeah. with yeah. zero light, only the green light you know, on the back of her head and a light on the back of her suit for a while. And, um, you know, she's here and there and next to the boat and away from the boat because we're, we're getting blown away around. Okay. Okay. You know, big so time. So the winds are lateral. The winds are crossing your bow. Um, they were on her, it was a tailwind most okay. of the time for okay. her, but sometimes it was from the South, from the Southeast, Got from it. the south, you know, and then from the north coming back. And, you know, so she did have tailwind, but whoo, waves, um, waves and chop and wind. And the boat was, you know, having trouble just idling or going slowly. Yeah. You know, she would be close to us, far away from us, in front of us, you know, and we're constantly, um, you know, helping the boat captain know where she was. And it was just like intense. You know, you just focus on the on her yeah. for eight hours. Now, are you sitting? These are, you know, seemingly um, 
innocent questions, but they're actually very important. Are you sitting down during this time? Are you sitting on a chair? Are you standing up? Are you blowing a whistle? What are you doing actually when you're observing other than writing notes every half an hour? Um, you're glued to her. And uh, I, the front of the boat had a couple of seats mm -hmm. next to the window, next to the opening. And um, so the captain was to my right. And I usually sat in that chair. Elaine and I usually sat in that chair where I had, I could see her through the window, but I could see her in the open air as oh. well, if she was in the sweet spot where we wanted to keep her. Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm sitting most of the time um, if I'm observing. Got it, got it. And, and here, what do you have around you? You have a clipboard, you have a pen, you have a whistle. What, what, are, the, what are the tools of the trade? <laughs> um, a clipboard with many, many, many pages of blank observation, uh, observer, obs observer notes, because you have to take the latitude, longitude, um, wind, sea temp, air temp, um, and what she's doing and what's happening. You know, like, what is she feeding on? What, it, you know, how's her mental state? How's her physical state? What's the, what's going on? Is it raining, cl cloudy, overcast? Um, are there stars? Are there, you know, um, is she saying anything? What is she saying? You know, and just kind of, you're trying to capture everything. Yeah. Um, so I have a clipboard, I have a pen. I have my Apple Watch, which I am using to do stroke count on her at least every 30 minutes and sometimes more often where you get a stroke count for a minute at a time to make sure she's staying on where she's supposed to be. And you, you know, cause with, if your stroke count drops, as you know, that yeah. might be an indication of something of getting cold or getting tired. Yeah. So, and, um, how was her uh, stroke count throughout the 52 hours? Did it fluctuate much? Um, no, uh, she's, just like an energizer bunny that just keeps swimming. So her typical, I think, you know, her high was a 50, 50 strokes per second. Typical was 49. Okay. And then, uh, you know, toward the end and in the cold, she kind of hit 44, 45. So she was it within that 10% Got it. range. So somewhere between 40, 44 and 50. Okay. And on that first evening, as it, as sun rises, how did that make you feel? How, how did it impact Caroline? Um, everybody, you know, all, all swimmers love when the sun comes up, you know, like when you're swimming in the dark, um, you just can't wait for, you know, that little glimmer. Um, it's kind of, you know, swimming in the dark is like swimming in a dream to me. Yeah. It's, you know, you can barely see your arms. Um, there's a relaxing thing to it, but there's also disorienting yes. at times. So any light whatsoever is wonderful. Um, for me as the crew, you know, I haven't pulled many all-nighters since college. So, you know, I'm, I was looking forward to that light coming up just so that I could have a better, you know, it wasn't so hard to fo see her and focus yeah. on her. Yeah. And um, I, it was, we all felt a great deal of relief, I think, when the sun comes up. Wow. Every, everything just gets easier seeing her gets easier. You hope for some sun to come out, a little bit of warmth. Um, the crew were making feeds in the dark. Oh. So, you know, every 30 minutes they're preparing what she wants. Yeah. And whether that be co liquid carbs, uh, hot chocolate, um, tomato soup. Uh, what else did she have? Uh, warm feet, warm feeds. Um, they're heating up water. Um, Sometimes we're sticking a solid in there, like Fig Newtons or a surprise Oreo for her. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in its own bottle. Um, so hungry. Yeah, I, yeah every, she loves surprise Oreos. Okay. Uh, so it, yeah, it just gets a whole lot, the whole thing gets easier when the sun comes up. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, observing, observing anyway takes a lot of mental energy and observing in the night just, yeah. It's tiring. Oh, I it's, feel it's tiring. It's exhausting. Yeah. And it, you feel a tremendous sense of responsibility. Yeah. You know, and it took all eyes that night. I mean, I think we had one, maybe Elaine was sleeping, I think, because we were doing eight and eight. Yeah. Um, Kelly was 
living on naps basically um, as the crew chief. And it, you know, it took all of us to, to have eyes on Caroline in the nighttime and when the, when the wind was kicked up like that. Yeah. Okay. So now the sun rises for the, yeah. on the first or the second day, um, your shift is finished. Elaine takes over. What yep. do you do in that eight hour span when uh, you're not on duty? Um, try really hard to sleep. I knew, I, I, I know that, you know, and I think what I've done with some of my swims, not like I'm not, I've done, not done anything like Caroline's, but I had some really long ones and really long, a really long relay. And um, I knew that you have to sleep. You have to force yourself to sleep. Also, when you have a new baby, like they tell you sleep when the baby sleeps, right? So um, I was forcing myself to sleep, okay. which didn't take much, but in the cuddy cabin, go to sleep, eat, you know, make sure you eat and uh, go to sleep. Yeah. So, uh, now, are you drinking, eating as you're observing or are you fasting during those eight hours? What, what, what what's happening? Um, you know, I, you're so busy that you're probably, you're not really, I mean, I, I was drinking a little bit here and there. You're not fixing food or anything or, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe uh, something in my pocket. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, may, there might've been some lemon heads. God. And- <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. And, and some caffeine and caffeine. Okay. And so now uh, that you, you go, you, uh, your shift is over that eight hours throughout that day. What did everything go smoothly uh, in the daytime? Uh, yeah. Let me think about this. I, you know, uh, Lake George is a tricky lake. Uh-huh. Um, there are, there's a place called the Narrows, mm-hmm. um, which is shallow. And um, so there, you know, we were navigating the tricky parts of the lake. Okay. Um, that's much more of a job for the captain than us, but you know, how close we could be to her, how far away, okay. keeping her on, you know, assured that we, that she's going in the right direction. Yeah. Because um, when she can't see that much, you know, with waves or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think the first day, daytime was was all good. Um, she, she made it to Ticonderoga, the north end, at just under 24 hours. Okay. So that was about 5.30 okay. um, on uh, Thursday. Okay. 5.30 p.m. All right. Now, when she's approaching the shore, are you deciding is someone going to go on shore to visit or be with her or is she just going to touch shore, uh, you know, get on dry land and then hop back in? What, what, were, the, what uh, were those plans? Yeah. Um, usually there is, there, you, there's, every swim's different that way, but um, it, it was so shallow that the boat really oh, couldn't go stay really close to, you know, in the, in the deepest water they could at that part of the lake. So Kelly, became the kayaker Got and it. he kayaked the last several miles in i probably five miles in and five miles back out oh really okay. yeah and came came back to the boat for feeds and then went out and stayed right next to caroline because we could not stay right next to her um at in those shallow areas it was just too tricky okay. and at the at the north end there's a rock um and you know if you can you get out and you get on the rock but if, if you can't get on the rock, you touch the rock Got it. and you stay in the water. So she touched the rock. The rock was, the rock is slimy and slippery. So she touched the rock and um, just under 24 hours. And then she has 10 minutes to stay in the water, feed. Um, we had a bag packed. She had a bag packed that went with her, you know, with contacts and so, you know, some soup and some solids and a sandwich. And, and then it was, turn around and come back. And, and how was her mental state uh, all the way there to the rock? Um, amazing, yeah. amazing. She's, you know, even after the 52 hour swim the next morning when she woke up, she said, I could have kept swimming. <laughs> and I'm like, the, the thing, that, the thing that, that was the hardest part, I think if you talk to her would be the sleep deprivation. Yeah. It wasn't the swimming and it wasn't her shoulders. It wasn't her arms. It wasn't anything like that. Um, so, you know, she just kept the same darn stroke 
yeah. you know, for the whole way. And, you know, she pops her head up. She, she was making jokes. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the conditions were so rough, you know, not, no time for, for joking, you know, um, it was more like, what do you want on your next feed? You know, how are things? Blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I went in and, um, changed one time. I think this was on day, maybe on Friday. I finally changed my clothes and, uh, I came out, I brushed my hair, put on a different sweatshirt and I came out and she goes, she stopped, she was on a feed and she's like, Jeannie, why do you look like you're going to a cocktail party? I'm like, I am not looking like a cocktail party, but I did just change my sweatshirt yeah. and brushed my hair. So she thought I, you know, and she okay. would sing on a, you know, like the sun came up and she was singing a song, like there has got to be a morning after. Um, so, you know, she's, generally fairly chipper yeah and how was it that second night any any issues there any problems any anything that stands out unbelievable oh really Un unbelievably rough hard. Okay. yeah unbelievably rough yeah first night there was some wind but second night um crazy wind um I was uh, off until I think Elaine had that shift. I, w I went to 145 that night and then she had the overnight shift. So as, as I understand it, it was, it was tough. It was a tough night. Um, again, it's all tailwind. So, you know, you, we were hoping it was helping her and, you know, it was, but it was also um, just crazy to keep track of her and the, um, the the boat and you know staying close enough to her but while being blown around yeah yeah and yeah. now there's not a lot of deck space on this boat <laughs> so every every square foot is a premium yeah. yes yeah. and that's why i would say to anybody just wear layers and bring a toothbrush yeah and and a water bottle and um you know don't think that you're gonna really change anything or do anything else other than you know, yeah. Job, sleep, maybe brush your teeth. Yeah. And how was the interaction between the observing, uh, the observer crew, and then the the piloting and navigation crew? Was that seamless? Oh yeah. yeah, they were great. I mean, they were all in. You know, they this was their first time yeah. um, uh, uh, taking a swimmer across. They're a dive company. Uh, but they were all in. They wanted to do everything in their power to get Caroline, to, you know, a successful swim. Yeah. Um, and they had a team and they rotated in and out. Okay. So they would come on a skiff and, you know, bring the new person, the new captain, and then the old captain oh, okay. would go off. And Got they it. were wonderful. They would bring emergency supplies as well. You know, oh, do we really? need, yeah, coffee, um, okay. you know, in the morning, sun comes up and, you know, the, the skiff would come with coffee and um, an emergency pack, another pack of double stuff Oreos. That was an emergency request um, for both the crew and Caroline. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I so think I'm going to go out. And, yeah. I think I'm going to go out and buy a pack of Oreos. You're making me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I don't know when the last time was I had Oreos, but man, that was, they tasted really good on that boat. Yeah. Okay, so now you're coming in. You, you, is there any point where you were nervous that she would not make it? Um, I don't think so. I think one time she said something that we didn't really understand. Um, and she said, well, I'm not going to finish this. So just give me this feed the next time. And, you know, at that point, she had been through like a really rough second night high winds and um you know the, it was it was a rough you know it it was smooth at right after she made the turn for a while and then you know that didn't last very long and then boom 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 and then lots of wind overnight and um but we misunderstood her i we figured out that she wasn't going to finish that feed so uh, just give it to me next time it wasn't i'm not going to finish this swim uh, you know Got it. Uh, we kept looking at the temperature for the second night and that's what made it difficult. Um, more so, I mean, the wind was there, but it really, it got down to 42. 
okay. 42, 43 air. Okay. Uh, the water was 66 uh -huh. with that she was swimming in, which she, but she felt chilled the whole time she was swimming. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, she was chilled the whole time. When her arms came out, they got, yeah, they yeah. got cold. And she would put them in under the water at feed time to, to get warm. Oh, really? Okay. So 66 was warming up her arms. Uh, but we, we kept just watching the weather. And we knew that if anything was going to get her, it was going to be the weather. Okay. And we knew that Friday night was going to get bad and Saturday night was going to get bad down into the 30s, which is why she moved the swim up oh, I to see. Wednesday to Friday. So Thursday night was already cold. So between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., that's when the temperature really went down. Okay. And, you know, she toughed it out, swimming in the dark, swimming in, in the wind, and swimming in, in pretty cold temps. And it was pretty cold still when I got up that morning, when I got up, you know, Friday morning. Yeah. Okay, so now the last 10 miles, what was that all about? Over five foot swells. Oh. Um, wind uh, at 30 miles per hour. Wow. 20, 25, 30, you wow. know, I'm going on what the, what the pilot was telling me, but he's like, these are thirties, you know, and wow. um, it was wicked. I mean, it was just waves crashing over her and, you know, surfing up on waves. And, you know, um, there was a small craft advisory that day. Wow. And, I mean, she couldn't see, we were pointing out islands, you know, go toward that island, you can't see it. Oh, there's too many waves, you know. Finally, it was go toward that mountain. You know? <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we could be close to her, sometimes we couldn't be as close as we need, yeah. as, as we wanted to be. Um, but she was a trooper. I mean, I don't know how many other people would, after, you know, that was after, what, Wednesday night to Thursday night to Friday morning. So, you know, what are we at? Like 36 hours plus. And then the wicked, wicked, you know, waves come in and wind. Wow. And it just stayed, you know, she was being blown. So she wouldn't know. It would feel like she's swimming south east, but she was really swimming south. We were being blown. Oh. You know, it was, it was disorienting, yeah. to, say, to say the least. Now, when the water has texture like that, when it's bumpy, it doesn't make your job any easier at all. No, we, at, at some point, you know, everybody stopped sleeping and it was just everybody out there, you oh. know, and, uh, you know, the last 10 miles slash 10 hours, um, you know, I, I think I had taken a nap and then after my, my sick, my third shift, um, but it was everybody, like we were all watching her because, there were times when the boat had to go around and do a 360. So these people had to watch and those people had, you know, wow. like, okay. um, and she's a dot in the water, yeah. you know, with a green light on the back of her head. Um, and you see the splashes of her stroke and that's what we're following, you know, but we always had multiple eyes on her all the time, Yeah. but it was, it was intense just making sure she was okay. Making, cause at this point the sleep deprivation is really kicking in. Yeah, yeah. So that last, let's say, 100 meters of her swim, how did that feel? Oh, I, I think, you know, we, we knew she was going to finish from, from several months. You know, she was never saying this is not going to happen or, you know, I'm, she, was, she was just going, 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 going and asking questions like, do you know where you're taking me? Yes, Caroline, we know where you're, we're taking you. Uh, she was worried about, you know, what she saw in her goggles and what was what she saw when she took her goggles off were two different things. Like things got really weird when she put her goggles on. So there were times when she thought we were taking her different places and that we didn't have a camera and we're like, we have all that stuff, you know. Um, so she was processing the end. And um, it was just, it was something to watch that she was, her stroke looked the same as it did when she started. You know, there were periods in there where she got tired, clearly, and cold. But, you know, those last few miles, man, you know, she looked like she did when she started. Wow. And, wow. you know, we just had to keep reassuring her that, you know, follow us, follow us, follow us, because it was dark again. Oh. And, you know, she finished at 10, 10 p.m. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Friday night. So she swam into her third night. Wow. And, um, you know, there were some people on the wall uh, waiting for her. Some people had, you know, we, we around the halfway point, were able to post things on Facebook so that people knew she was doing this. And uh, some people were there. And then it was really cool. There were two fishermen there and asking questions and people were telling him telling them what she was doing and they said can we play sweet caroline when she comes in and they had a, a boom box i think and really and queued up sweet caroline for her and that that couldn't have been you couldn't have planned it better yeah oh wow so now she she walks up on shore um is she shivering is she hungry is she exhausted um she didn't really get out of the water right away. She's just really? kind of floating around, talking, you know, talking to people, waving, you know, she couldn't tell who was up there really. Um, there were some swimmers up there and from the area. Um, and then, you know, her cap was bothering her. So it was good to get the cap off. And, uh, but no, I don't, she wasn't overly cold. I don't think um, she got out of the water. Her, she was hoarse. Okay. Um, you know, that had really, you know, a scratchy voice. Um, we got her out on the ladder up to the, the back, the, the plat the swim platform uh -huh. on the back of the boat and then up to the dock, um, dry robe towel, you know, get her warm and then, um, got her in the car and to the dive shop so that we could, um, try to get some pizza yeah. into her. Uh, didn't it, she didn't feel so great you know there's a lot of you know jostling around for all those hours so mm -hmm. she was nibbling on her pizza but she was in good spirits and happy and you know and then we you know i don't think she got to bed until 2 a.m and then up at nine and you wouldn't have known that really anything. yeah 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 she was like downstairs at the airbnb just like you know, had a little a little scratchy on the throat, but otherwise she was having her coffee and let's sit out on the porch and, and talk and, you know. Oh, she and said she didn't feel any different with her shoulders than she did on like her first four hour training swim this summer. Wow. I know. Wow. And how did you feel after this? <laughs> like a truck ran over me. Oh, really? <laughs> um, no, I actually... Um, there were moments where it was really hard on the boat uh, from a focus standpoint, but it's interesting. It's just like open water swimming. Um, you adapt. Humans really do an amazing job at adaptation. You know, that first night when I was like, you know, watching every stroke and, you know, where is she? Is she too close to the boat, too far away? Um, stressful. And then you kind of adapt to the situation and you're like, this is the situation you know, you adapt. So when I'm in my long swims, you know, things start to hurt. You're like, well, this is the situation. I'm going to adapt. You know, I can't make the waves go away. I can't make the top go away. I can't make the night go away. You just adapt. And uh, so I think, you know, we adapted. Um, I got to sleep a little bit more than maybe the, the, the three crew did because Elaine and I were doing the eight, eight and eight. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, instantaneously to bed and back up at 8 30 and start getting things ready to go home and have some breakfast and visit with Caroline for a while and uh I've had a little bit of uh feeling funny on land uh, oh. I swam today it's the land sickness yeah. that kind of comes afterward when you're I remember it after my English channel relay I got in the shower and I I got dizzy you know, I felt, I felt like after, after the relay, you know, kind of felt like everything was moving today. I swam and, um, I got out and had wobbly, you know, I, I didn't have my sea legs when I got out of the water, which was kind of different, but I'm all good. Yeah. I'm recovered. I'm recovered. Yeah. So, so now you've seen her swim for 52 hours and 24 minutes. Yeah. Um, how does that make you, is, is that an inspiration to you? Is, is you just want to go out in there and, and crush it in the English channel, crush it in uh, Catalina? What is, yeah. 
It, it does. I mean, you know, I, I think it makes my swims seem like this big and, but perspective is everything, right? So, you know, most people around me think I'm nuts. You know, when I go, oh, I want to do that 20 miler or, or, you know, around Manhattan or whatever. Um, but I, you know, just seeing what's possible and, you know, that, you know, it makes, it makes those things, things seem possible for me. Yeah. You know, we're all different. We all have different goals. Um, Caroline and I have different goals. I'll never want to do some of the swims she's doing. Um, but there's so many swims to do. Like how many lifetimes do I have to do them? Yeah. You know, and, um, I kind of stumbled upon this, this sport 10 years ago in my mid forties. I kind of wish like I would have found it long, you know, earlier, but I just always had a sense I would love it. And I do. And it inspires me. And as a crew member, I learned a lot on this swim. Um, about what my crew needs um, and how what and how much I appreciate and will appreciate my crew already. I always do, but oh my gosh, it is such a selfless, important job um, to, you know, you're holding somebody's life in your hands yeah. and their dreams. And, you know, you will have to make that help make that call. Like, I mean, the pilot of course has the call on whether or not the, the swim goes on, but her crew are really trying to keep her in yeah. and in the game. And uh, it just really taught me a lot about, you know, what you want to have in a crew, um, the, the composition of personalities and, and jobs and who can be on that boat and who can't be on that boat. And, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, inspires me to follow my, whatever my dreams are, you know, yeah. She well, wanted to do this. Talking to you, I mean, I can hear the passion, um, and I think any swimmer would be very lucky to have you as their crew oh, member focused. Thank you. It was it was an honor. It was an honor to to be up close and personal and watch this go down, yeah. and for Caroline to trust to trust me and um, the rest of our our all female awesome team. Uh, we all feel honored. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations to you and everybody else. Thank you. And thanks for letting me talk about it today. Thank you.